Do we want to do Grady's birthday hat again real quick? Yes. Just okay. Such a good sport about it. I have three cats and any one of them would claw my eyes. Yeah, we we need his hat. Hold. If I tried to put a bow tie and a top hat on that. Hold on a second. Let me let me get let's get cuz it is birthday. Grady is 3 years old now. Come here. Grady is this many. <laughs> Hello, sleepy gone? boy. No, he's like, oh, Jesus, again? We will get you your own hat on your birthday. And, and Loki is, like, jealous. See, you know, Loki's sitting outside, like, oh, what? Yeah. Everybody on Twitter is like, oh, no, you have to do it. I think we're going to get him the captain It's so hat. cute. It's so cute. I want to get Simba the little lion mane, but he keeps telling me it's a bad idea. It probably is because Simba's not a Simba is not great. So, Simba likes to bite. People Simba's not quite as patient around as that part. Yeah, he hasn't bitten anybody in a while. No, in a while. I mean, he he got me last night a little bit, but he didn't break the skin, and it was my fault. <laughs> I was watching Jackson Galaxy, and he had this woman who got bit by her cat, and it was like two tiny little puncture wounds, and he freaks out, and he's like, oh my god, that's a really bad bite. Did you have to go to the hospital? And I'm like, y'all don't know my Simba. That's not that's not a bad bite. Yeah, there's there's no way you'd be doing that with Simba. <laughs> but, I know, Grady. He's super cute, though. Grady is a uniquely patient cat. There's not a lot of cats that would come up with this shit. He's just like, whatever, man. Fine. He is like the dude of cats. <laughs> he just abides. Grady abides. You're like, whatever. You're like, just cool. cool. You're scratching my face. It's fine. It's fine. He's so cute. <laughs> I love him. You should come visit. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I'll bring I'll bring my three little Hellions. It'll be great. No, they avoid this office like it's me. It's filled with bees now. When I'm on the air, Simba was in here before, hanging out, yelling at me. Peggy spent all day asleep in the window. I go on the computer like the whole place is full of bees. Oh, look at the bow tie. <laughs> He's like, your people used to worship mine as gods. <laughs> gods, I tell you. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh wait, okay. what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> Where did the world go? All right, that's enough. You could take it off. It's like the, it's. I feel like I'm in the Christmas story. <laughs> <laughs> you only wear it when Aunt Clara comes over. <laughs> You can take it off now. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. You go you go sleep. But hey. he's such a good sport. Like any three of mine, I would be rocking the Nick Fury look if I tried that shit. They would just not be about it. Alright, so it's time for the the news. Um Oh my god. I I know we're gonna have hurricane bullshit next week. I know we are. I mean, yeah. You're gonna have people who think Twister was an instruction manual, and they're uh. gonna try and make their own thingies to read the hurricane or something. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call "What the fuck is wrong with you." And uh, let's start it with this story. And of course, it's a Florida story. Um, Is Florida getting the hurricane? No, they are not. They are not. They haven't even made projections for whether it's coming up here yet. They're just like, we don't don't know. We don't fucking know. It's going to hit land and then it's going to do some shit, probably. Um, So uh, this one, I think this one might appeal to you. You watch Supernatural, right? I do. Um, what are, just, just a little quiz here. What are some ways to combat ghosts? Salt. Salt. You salt, one. of course. Yeah. Iron. Iron, right. Um, you find the body and salt and burn it. Yeah. Um, Go what about, 
Eat. What about guns, Tara? Do, 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 do guns work on ghosts? If you fire rock salt rounds. That's a Winchester special. They fill shotgun shells with, with rock salt. Well, this is not how that works, though. Paranormal investigator fires gun at alleged ghost inside home. I mean, regular guns aren't going to work. Actually, this is this is totally in Connecticut. I'm sorry, that was Florida. It's not oh, so. <laughs> Maybe like the American Horror Story universe ghosts, because they seem to be weirdly corporeal. Connecticut man who told police he was a paranormal investigator faces several charges after firing shots in his house, and what he told police may have been a ghost. Christian DeVoe? Oh, you were not born, Christian DeVoe. Don't <laughs> even. 25. That That is... A bon true elder. That is a LARP name if ever there was a <laughs> Christian. My ass, you're Christian. Von true from New Orleans in a frilly shirt. Christian DeVoe, 25, is doing court on September 11th on five counts, including the illegal discharge of a firearm, making false statements to police, second-degree reckless endangerment, misusing emergency call, and disorderly conduct. Police say DeVoe put two bullet holes in his wall, initially reporting the, uh, the incident as an attempted break-in. He later told police he believes the intruder was actually a spirit. Um... Two things. Yeah. How do they know he made a false report? Maybe it really was a ghost and he just dealt with it wrong. <laughs> well, he first he first called it an alleged break in. Okay, so. maybe the ghost <laughs> broke in. You can't prove that shit. Second thing. <laughs> Connecticut has some of the toughest fucking gun laws in America. Mm. Like, the gun laws in, in Connecticut are kind of, no. No, why the fuck do you need one? It's Connecticut. Will Jr. said it was a spirit, all right. It was Jack Daniels. It could have been the ghost of a Texas ladies' man. Uh, I just, it. Four people are going to get that because they're babies. It, yeah, yeah. You can't kill the ghost again. You can. No, you can't. It's, it's a very specific type of Japanese ghost because there was an episode <laughs> of Supernatural where they had to do just that. They had to recreate his death. Oh. You open that door. Tara, you're fi you've locked up. Yeah, my whole computer locked up for a second, but it's back now. Oh, yeah. No, you're fine. Yeah, um, my whole computer just went stupid for a minute. No, I just... it. it <laughs> But yeah, regular old bullets aren't going to do much good. You can't. I mean, if you could just kill the ghost again, it would make horror movies a lot shorter. Any any ghost stupidity that goes on in Connecticut, I auto fucking magically blame on the Warrens. <laughs> you know, everyone knows Ed and Lorraine Warren now because of the fucking Conjuring movies. Mm. Ed and Lorraine Warren are from Connecticut, and they've been rocking that con for. Well, Lorraine has since passed away, but every year in my college at Halloween, they would come speak and explain to you, like, their years hunting the paranormal and, like, how, what, how to know if you're possessed by a demon and, like, how to not get raped by a ghost. Because, you know, you're in college. You gotta, you gotta worry enough about getting raped by the fucking rugby team, let alone a ghost. <laughs> All I gotta say is, if you could shoot a ghost to death, Poltergeist would have been about an hour shorter. Yeah. Uh. Also, Annabelle, that doll from the movie, Annabelle's a four-foot Raggedy Ann doll. Mm. The real Annabelle is a four-foot high Raggedy Ann doll. Not whatever that bullshit in the movie was. Well, it's uh oh this this is someone from Ireland about to do you the opposite of, what's the opposite of proud shame shame I yeah. mean it's Ireland so yes shame shame is big with the Irish um because most of us are Catholic this the I I gotta say everyone keeps finding the more most creative ways to get thrown off of an airplane every week we do this every 
week. Nazi salute, easy jet, Belfast passenger jailed. Oh, well, it's Northern Ireland, so they might not be Catholic. My bad. A Nazi salute. In Ireland, it's, it's different. A Nazi saluting passenger who tried to grab an airline pilot by the throat has been jailed for three months. Dismissing the appeal by 51-year-old Paul Anthony uh, Burgoyne? Or Burgoyne? Burgoyne. Burgoyne. Uh, Judge Melody McReynolds said, given his bullying behavior on the EasyJet flight, a deterrent sentence is entirely appropriate. Uh, Burgoyne, originally from Northern Ireland, now living in uh, Temple Close Shepshead in Loughborough, uh, pled guilty to nine offenses arising from the incident in February of this year. Um, prosecuting lawyer told the, co- the court that when a member of the cabin crew asked Burgoyne to raise the window blind for takeoff, he gave her a Nazi salute and told her, all right, mein Führer. He was, Come on. He was told he, he would be removed if there were further issues, but he continued to be aggressive and swearing. I mean, in, our, in, in his defense, he's Irish. We're going to try to we're grab... kind of always aggressive and swearing. <laughs> Bur- yes. <laughs> Bur- Shut up, you dirty Brit. Burgoyne tried to grab the captain by the throat, but grabbed him by the shirt collar. Uh, he ejected from the plane, which was still attached to the tug vehicle. Burgoyne kicked the vehicle and then tried to get in, grabbing the joystick and steering wheel before kicking a member of the ground crew who tried to intervene. So he got kicked off the plane and then decided, no, no, I'm going to get back in. No, you're not. Um... Where was it? Uh, it's listed why this happened. Let me see. Uh, that's... The lawyer told the court Burgoyne had come back to Northern Ireland for a family meeting, which had unfortunately become toxic and coupled with issues dating back to childhood. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, also, uh, Burgoyne was high on a cocktail of alcohol and cocaine when he boarded the flight. I, so the obvious thing when you have a fight with your family over your deep-seated childhood issues is to take it out on the flight attendant? And cocaine. Yeah. And cocaine. Alcohol and cocaine. That's not a good combination. That's, That's, alcohol does this. Cocaine does this. That, you're fucking up your transmission. Yeah, like, you don't want to hit the gas and the brake at the same time. That's... That's... No bueno. Oh, God. I just, it, why, right now, in the world, not just America, in the world, why of all fucking things would you go with a Nazi salute? I mean, there are red flags, and then there are blaring red fire siren alarm lights and shit. Nobody, if you start start doing the little little mustache shit and on the fucking plane nobody wants to fly with that nobody but please close your window shade isn't really much like the holocaust anyway oh yeah we remember the holocaust famously like all... it's not a great metaphor famously a bunch of minorities persecuted religions they were all gathered up and told to close the window shade on their flight yeah. that that's history yeah. That's it's, it's it's yes. Horrible. Six million windows had to be closed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I'm not making fun of the Holocaust. It's, making uh, fun of this overreacting jackhole. Exactly. Like that's not a fair comparison that you're making. I mean, Jesus Christ. There's you're not my mom, and then there's this bullshit. The, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, you go to jail. You have fire. You have fun in jail. Like, I'm sorry that you have issues with your family. You're Irish. <laughs> it kind of comes with the territory. We're all fucking crazy people. And oh. we're aggressive and swearing. Or melancholy and depressed. Those are the two flavors we come in. <laughs> You're having problems with your family. Uh, next up is from North Carolina. And, uh... You know, if someone takes something that you own 
If someone steals some of your property, you call the police. That that makes sense. But what if they want it more than you do? <laughs> Still illegal. Asking for a friend who's a raccoon. Um, but here's the thing. When they steal things from you which are illegal, <clears throat> that's a problem. Why do they keep doing this? Meth lab bombs found inside Johnson County man's home. Johnson County deputies discovered homemade bombs and drugs, and they went to arrest a convicted felon for having firearms. As I understand it, a meth lab is a bomb? So yeah, it's two things. Um, Jeffrey Beasley is not allowed to own guns as a result of his convicted felon status. But Johnson County Sheriff's Captain Jeff Caldwell said Beasley called 911 to report that someone stole his rifle. Really? So that was the first problem. Deputies went to Beasley's home Tuesday to arrest him for firearm possession violations. Which called... is going to happen when you're not supposed to have a gun and you call the cops and tell them that you have a gun. Caldwell said the investigators noticed what appeared to be equipment for making methamphetamines. Deputies obtained a search warrant and found two explosive devices in addition to the drugs. So, um... What you did was, there's a thing called probable cause. Mm -hmm. And the police don't automatically get that. Unless, to them. unless you do something to give them cause, such as illegally owning a firearm that you then report stolen. Yeah. And then leaving out your drug paraphernalia when they come to talk to you about that. <laughs> That's that's one thing I will never understand. Like, probable cause is like if you open the door for the cops and while they're standing in your doorway talking to you behind you, you've got like a stolen missile and two prostitutes riding it. <laughs> they're going to be there. They can at that point they, they can at say that point can come in and have a fucking look around. And I, I will I will give these people credit. Not only did they uh, did they get probable cause, they actually got a search warrant before they went. So, you know, they did the shit right. But what the fuck? Dude, come on. It's like, well, you know what? I will I did get arrested for the illegal stuff. I am a convicted felon, but how much worse can it get? So much worse. So much worse. What's the line from Oceans 8? Now you're more convicted felon. <laughs> yes. Now you're going to be a two-time convicted felon. It's it's not like you know, it's not like you it's not, you're going to fucking jail again. Double they don't. Jeopardy doesn't mean that they can never put you in jail again. <laughs> that's not what that means. That like once you go to jail, they can't ever put you. That's not what that means. <laughs> and I love the look on this been guy. A very different and more interesting Ashley Judd movie, if that's what it meant. The mugshot is priceless. It's just and how y'all doing? You have a good afternoon. What's going on? Also, why do people leave drug paraphernalia lying around? I don't I don't I like, I like dudes where their hair and their beard is all exactly the same length. <laughs> <laughs> like he's one of those magnet things. <laughs> Wooly willy. <laughs> yeah. No, but I don't, even for your legal drugs, even if pot is legal where you are. Why do you leave your paraphernalia just lying around? I mean, I have Simba's drug paraphernalia lying around. I mean, but fuck. Is, he, it's easy to get to, and he's a cat. I mean, fuck's sake, even for this stupid thing, which is legal, I still put my stuff in a general area that's not just sprawled out where anybody can come on in and see, you know, the liquid and the coils and shit. I, I, you gotta be a little tidy with the shit. It's expensive. 
You gotta look at it, for fuck's sake. Don't just Believe leave. Me, I, I keep telling Dan not to leave his lines of coke <sighs> out on the coffee table all the time, just in case he wants to snort them later. You should have seen it when Simba got a hold of that. That was a bad day. Uh, that was a bad day. Um, let's see. Well, here's here's one. Another one of our felons who uh, has trouble linking concepts together. Um, I'm just going to throw this out there to make sure. I'm gonna say, this is for the audience, too. Um, how does a GPS bracelet work? The little chip mm -hmm. sends a little signal to the thing that tracks it. Right. So, you know. I actually, let's think about that. <laughs> When you're wearing a GPS ankle bracelet, it tells them where you are at all times. They it, can't have lines of coke because it's a Pepsi household. That is true. Oh, that was bad. So you kind of, you understand the concept. You're wearing a GPS bracelet. They know where you are. So probably the worst thing to do is to uh, rob 10 houses. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's the worst thing to do. Riverhead, Long Island. Long Island? Long Island. A man is accused into, of breaking into at least 10 Riverhead homes. Police say they caught Tahi McKay of Riverhead by tracking his GPS ankle monitor. <laughs> McKay was arraigned yesterday on 10 counts of burglary. So you have already, on probation... You already had the ankle monitor. You are already bad at crime. Maybe he was trying to write them a message, like in that cute Fitbit commercial, <laughs> where the guy goes on a run and makes a heart for his wife. <laughs> like, maybe he was trying to send them a message. I mean, at, at this point, I would already just accept, you know... Not guilty. <laughs> You know, at, th at this point, I would already just accept the fact that crime is not for you. You're yeah. not good at it. Yeah. To double... Th Why do you think they gave you that thing? It's not like a ball and chain. It's not meant to slow you down. It's not like a badge of honor. No, it's... it's like, you crimed so good, here's some jewelry. It's got a little blinky red light and everything. Aren't you a lucky boy? My mom used to be the social worker at this jail. <laughs> at the jail in Riverhead. Always have these tangents. Always have something. Something. I'm from Long Island. Yeah, she worked at this jail for a long time. They would have probably had her talk to this kid. Ten break... And, and this is one of those where it's like the, the prosecutor just comes in and goes, Your Honor, here's where he was. Here's where the places that got broke into was... They're done. Yeah. You're bad at crime. That's pretty conclusive. You, you... It does say one house was broken into four times. <laughs> That's where you don't go back. You like steal the dining set one piece at a time. <laughs> What did you go back four times for? It's not like it's not like JC Penny. <laughs> no. You can't browse. Not the library. The fuck? <laughs> you are bad at crime. Stop doing it. It's not your calling. Yeah. You should try a different line of work. Yeah, cause... which is going to be harder because now you're going to have a conviction on your record. And I understand that, and that sucks because our society is stupid. Uh, like we make it harder to reintegrate into society because we're like, you went to jail, no job for you. Guess you'll just have to go back to crime. Why did you go back to crime? I all right. Our next one, it's Florida, and I feel a little bad actually airing this story because we're kind of giving this idiot exactly what he wants. Oh boy, which makes me sad. But. Duty first. Um, fleeing deputy, drunk man, crashes truck, jumps into ocean. After being rescued, he told deputies his chase would, quote, make for a great story. 
Did I just hear Peggy growl somewhere? <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. Okay. Duck Key, Florida. A drunken man led Monroe County Sheriff's deputies on a high speed chase early Sunday, eventually crashing his pickup into the entrance sign for Duck Key and jumping into the ocean. Deputies on a Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission boat whisked him from the water, but not before the man tried to elude authorities by hiding under a bridge, clinging to a piling. After the rescue, he reportedly told deputies that the morning's events would make for, quote, a great story to tell his friends and family. When they visit you in prison... What kind of friends and family wouldn't he, would hear this story and wouldn't just go, oh, not again? <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Mark. <sighs> what a funny story. Uh, N- Nicholas Tralka, 31, faces a number of charges, including driving under the inf- influence, causing property damage, and resisting arrest. Look, if your story starts with, okay, so this time, this one time I was out driving drunk, stop it's not gonna be a good story that's 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 already it's a bad story unless the story is then i realized i was human garbage and i pulled over and slept it off there you go but no no if you i mean it, this is one of those hey y'all see that sign into town i crashed into that once let me tell you a story <laughs> they had to replace that because me that was me i did that I don't think people in Florida talk like that. Oh, they do. Is it? Because I find that weird that Florida is like the most Southern state, but you don't associate the Southern accent with it. It depends. Okay. Here's how Florida works. If you go far South, the the end of the peninsula, that's more Latino Cuban influence down there. The middle area, uh, Orlando, Tampa, that's snowbird territory. Yeah. It's tourists and snowbird. Yeah. But then if you go up to the panhandle, that part that is underneath Alabama and just south of Georgia, that's where you get them talking like this. That I literally always forget is part of Florida. Yeah, that that's swampland, and uh, yeah, that's that's exactly how that is. That it's 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 so many different brands of crazy down there, so many different kinds. And the boiled peanuts thing. <clears throat> what boiled peanuts thing? When we, when we were in Florida, Dan made us stop over at this fucking meth uh-huh. lab on the side of the road <laughs> where they were burning garbage and had like stacks of old tires and were selling boiled peanuts out of an old oil drum. That looks reputable, right? I'm going to eat that. We had to buy them. And they put them in a plastic shopping bag for us. And then he put these things in the car, and then the whole car smelled like sweaty gym socks. Dan, don't listen to her. Until we moved them to the trunk. Don't listen and to her. I tried one, and it was like... Awesome. It was, like, mushy, but still crunchy, and completely devoid of flavor, and also smelled like feet. Don't, don't listen to her, Dan. Well, peanuts are awesome. And I was unsure of why anybody would do this thing on purpose. Boiled peanuts are fantastic. They are. They are. No. You're outvoted on this one. They're terrible. They're awesome. They're voted by dudes. <laughs> that doesn't count. Yeah, it does. Freaking Yankee. Anyone in the You're YouTube wrong. comments will tell you I hate anybody with peanuts. Tara is not outvoted because I also <laughs> do not understand boiled peanuts. You've never had boiled peanuts. I have no desire to. Well, okay, disqualify. Because no. You haven't eaten them. You haven't eaten them. It's gross. You haven't eaten them. But but no. You haven't eaten them. I don't have to. Exactly. Uh-huh. No, you But no. No. Yankees, man. Yeah. Freaking Yankees. Ah, uh, final story for this week. More Florida. Right up our alley. Naked and fire. Oh god, no. <laughs> Those things don't go together. Naked man starts house fire while baking cookies on a George Foreman grill. What? Wow. Responded to a house fire last week. Niceville police officers and firefighters encountered an odd sight. When firefighters got to the home around 5.30 p.m., they could see smoke coming from inside. 
a naked man opened the front door, said, I'm sorry, and closed the door. <laughs> Police officers arrived shortly after to assist. The man came to the door, left it open, and went back in the house. According to the offense report from the police department, the man showed no signs of understanding the danger he was in. There were several things on fire inside the home, including some towels. Was he literally drinking a cup of coffee and saying this is fine? <laughs> no, he was drinking two liters of vodka and smoking marijuana starting okay. at 9 a.m. That makes more sense. Uh, based on the fire department's investigation, the man allegedly tried baking cookies on a George Foreman grill, which he left unattended. The grill of the cookies caught fire, so he put dry towels on top of the grill. <laughs> Those caught fire, too. <laughs> yes, they would. Uh, they're flammable. I just love this drunk, this drunk stone bastard. Is like, oh no, I man! Cookies on a George Foreman grill. <laughs> I don't think you can. That's not how that works. My favorite part of the story is when the cops showed up. He just <laughs> opened the door and went no, and shut the door again. I don't know. He said, "I'm sorry." I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> my bad, yo. It was just, he's sitting there with the cookies. Oh, my cookies. Oh, these are ruined. It just puts a towel on him and goes about his business. Drunk, naked, and on fire is no way to go through life. The whole time his dick's out. The whole time. He could have been making sausage on the George Foreman grill. <laughs> That's not safe. You yeah, know, the room and I'm worried what he's run to get. Huh? You, oh, I was concerned you went yeah. to get a visual aid or something. No. No. You, you know, it's so to come back in with the panini press. You know, at some point, this this guy uttered, "Oh no, my cookies, man." Yeah, that actually probably came out of his mouth. Two that's liters. Not way, that's not a good way to make cookies. Two liter of vodka is not a little bit of vodka. <laughs> That's a lot of vodka. That's that's like all the vodka. At 9 a.m., two liters of vodka and and a joint. That's when you you shouldn't be making anything, okay? And by the way, that's not a nutritious breakfast. <laughs> it's all empty calories. Like vodka and cookies. That's that's it's just all carbs. That's all carbs. I mean, you know, you do know. I I've checked Grubhub several times. There are several bakeries in my area that will just deliver cookies to you. We don't have one of those near us anymore, and it pisses me off so bad. At our old place, we had one, and here we don't, and it makes me really mad. They'll deliver cookies. They'll deliver cupcakes. They'll just, they'll bring you. So you don't need, you shouldn't be cooking when you're very drunk and stoned. Yeah, you shouldn't. I mean, I've, you know what? It is America. Those are both kind of legal. One of them is kind of legal. But if you want to get very drunk and stoned on a Sunday morning, okay, it's your house. Go right ahead. Maybe, though. Maybe. In preparation. Yeah. Make the cookies first. Make the cookies first before you get drunk. You have the munchies. They'll be cool. Yes. They will be. Don't bake while baked. Thank you, Will Junior. Yeah. Cause when you're when you are ready, when you are good and ready for the fucking cookies, the cookies will be ready for you. And not on fire. And not on fire. Cause that is that is an important part about cookies. They do not need to be on fire. And I just I love that thing just like, I'm sorry, and shut the fucking door. I'm sorry. I don't know how that works, man. At you're least he tired. was polite about it. See, so your baking disaster didn't go that bad. True. Dan tried to make a cake this week, and it didn't work out. But you didn't set anything on fire, and you didn't answer the door for the cops naked. True. Uh, I just have to stick to booze, bombs, and cooking, and everything's fine. I don't think that's a good combination either. <laughs> so what have we learned this week? We've learned... Um, cooking requires pants and sobriety. Yes. 
two very important important aspects of cooking, pants and sobriety. I mean, like many things in life, pants and, and sobriety are pretty important. Yeah, they're good to, for you. To the baking process. Um, we've learned that the uh, meaning of the word good story is all relative. Yeah. And that doesn't you know, I mean... I want to see, like, the Playboy Channel have a naked baking show, though. Like, a competition... Like, Chopped, but naked people. No, you don't. I kind of do. That would get bad very quickly. I know. <laughs> At some point, Ron Jeremy would have to make an appearance. And singe off all that disgusting body hair. <laughs> uh, we've learned that... Uh... <laughs> We've learned when you you are wearing a GPS bracelet, you've already been busted. Maybe, maybe it's time to stop the crime. Just stay home. Just, just. There are other ways to. Maybe look into credit card fraud. You can do that from home. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. Um, we've learned that the police are not going to get back your illegal property for you. Uh, I mean, they're going to get it back, but they're not going to give it to you. Yeah, it's not for you. And they're probably going to take your other illegal... Why did you have two bombs? What were the bombs for? For getting his gun back? <laughs> We've learned that no one wants to fly with a Nazi. Don't don't pretend to be a Nazi. Don't do the Nazi... Sarcastic well, Nazi. Like, you're I... from Northern Ireland. Ireland didn't even get into World War II. They were a fucking neutral country. Mm-hmm. Like, the only way people don't it? know that. Yeah, Ireland didn't really like getting involved in anybody else's shit. Yeah, Ireland did not participate in World Well, They were neutral. They didn't participate in World War II. They weren't one of the allies. Uh, well, actually, <clears throat> Northern Ireland, because they belonged to Britain, did. Yes. So... I, but I, Ireland didn't. Northern the Ireland. The Republic of Ireland did not, because they pretty much keep themselves to themselves. They don't they don't want to deal with any of your bullshit. And finally, we learned that the ghost is already dead. Your bullets, they do nothing. Yeah, unless they're filled with rock salt. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's probably not going to work, because um, ghosts aren't real! I mean, that's not true. That is very true. We have Ghost Miracle, who tells things to our cats. And that's why Peggy and Dottie have such clean ears. That's just science. Because <laughs> she whispers to them that if they don't clean their ears, Dan's going to jam his thumb in them. And so they keep their ears clean. You know, technically, all of this is admissible evidence, right? <laughs> Only if I get caught. 